welcome to my latest video. This video is in our Getting to Know Us series and it's in honor of Father's Day coming up in a little over a week. I wanna tell you guys about how I met my husband. I was 29 years old, almost 30. I had three small boys at home as a single mom. This was back before internet dating was a thing back before cell phones were a thing. This was back when the only people you met on the internet were serial killers and crazy people. This was almost 20 years ago. It was November 2nd, 1998, to the Saturday. Nick was almost two years old and I just laid him down for a nap. The older boys, Mark and Kyle, had friends over and they were in the basement in the rec room playing with their toys. I was getting bored and I logged into our computer. The internet was so brand new. There was hardly anything you could do on it. It looked nothing like it did today. It was so much harder to navigate. There were chat rooms and message boards and some computer programs that you could use spe um, specifically for the kids and stuff, but that is almost all you could do. You could email. Cell phones were pretty new. Only a few people had them. Hardly anybody had them and everybody had help. Um, most people, all, almost everybody had a home phone. I had recently discovered message boards. It was a page where people put ads up and you could respond to them and they were hilarious. I'm serious. I recently discovered them and I loved reading them because they were just hilarious. They were, and some of them were super scary. Typically they were crazy people looking for other crazy people. This particular day, November the 2nd, I found this ad that actually appealed to me. The guy said he was tall, which is like the only one criteria that I've ever had in a man is that I only like tall men. And in the ad, this man said that he had a God complex and I had no idea what a God complex meant. I thought it meant that he loved God. And every time I was reading, while I was reading his ad, I was thinking, oh, that sounds exactly like me. So I decided to write a response. It would be the first time I'd ever written a response to a, to a ad on a message board. So just as I was about to start writing the ad, I realized I had a really bad belly ache and I kind of had a headache and I felt sick and I felt tired and I was thinking to myself, you know, I should just lay down and have a rest before Nick wakes up. I should just lay on the couch so that I can hear the boys. So I moved my mouse over to the X on the page and I was almost about to click it off. But then something in me said, it will take you two seconds to send a message. So I did, I responded and I said, wow, you sound exactly like me. That's all that I said. I said it, I sent it, I got off the computer, I laid down on the couch and had a little rest. Fast forward a few hours later, I had woken up from my little rest, the kids were um, all fed and bathed and ready for bed, I tucked them in, read them their story, and then before I tucked myself in that night, I decided to check my email. So I went to the computer, I logged in again, it was dial up, it was way back when you had to dial up, it took 20 minutes just to get on the internet, and I logged in, I checked my email, and I had a message from this guy. I totally had forgotten that I even responded to this ad, but anyway, the message from this man said, where do you live? I have a car, I can drive there. That's all he said, and I thought, wow, that guy is crazy, I'm never talking to him again. So I wrote down, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna tell you where I live, that's just crazy, and then I sent it, and I went to bed. So sure enough, on November the 3rd, I got another message from him, and he sounded a little bit more normal, so I I emailed him back. So over the next couple of days, that was a, that was a Sunday, um, over the next, over that next week, we w had been emailing back and forth. Not once did I ever think, wow, this guy is really cool. I really like him. I just kept thinking, this is weird. He's probably a serial killer. I have three children I need to be protecting. Like, I'm never going to tell him where I live. So, um, I went to work early that week and I said to my friends, you know, I, I met this guy on the internet and instantly they all said, don't talk to him anymore. He's probably a killer. And I was thinking, yeah, he probably is a killer. So uh, every night after the kids would go to bed, I would log on and I would check my email and there would always be emails from him. And he really sounded super sweet and super interesting to me. And he sounded, he reminded me of me and I just felt a connection to him over time. And anyway, so by the next Friday, he said, well, what's your phone number? And I'll phone you. And I was thinking, I am not gonna let him phone me. That is really crazy. So we had a tradition when the boys were little, there was a thing on TV called TGIF. And every Friday, it was, um, Grew, I was a bunch of shows that were geared toward my kids' age, and we'd always lay in bed and have treats and popcorn, and we would watch TGIF together. And 
one night, so that Friday, I gave him my phone number. I don't know what I was thinking, but I gave him my phone number and I said, you cannot phone me until nine o'clock. But at quarter to nine, my phone rang and I was in bed laying with the kids and we were watching, Nicholas was in bed, the two-year-old was in bed, but my older sons were um, with me. They were six and eight and we were watching TV. So I answered the phone and I said, hello. I had this horrible, horrible cough. And I am never sick. If any of you guys have been following our um, daily vlogs, then you know I'm hardly ever sick. Anyway, I had this horrible, horrible cough. And so I talked to the guy and my very first impression was like, oh my gosh, she sounds like a child molester. I am never going to ever meet this guy. And he said to me, wow, you're sick. I don't date sick women because, um, yeah, I, I don't like people who are sick all the time. And anyway, so we had like a little conversation, but those were our first impressions of each other. And so we hung up the phone and somehow, miraculously, he continued to email me and I continued to email him. And then a couple of weeks later, he said, well, hey, I have a car. I actually, after every single email, he would say to me, I have a car, I can drive there. Where do you live? And I kept thinking, I'm never going to tell you where I live. So. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, um, he kept on hounding me with where where do you live? I can meet you. So I said to one of my friend, I said to one of my good friends at work, I said, well, I think I'm gonna meet this guy, but I don't want him to be close to where we live. I want to like go out of town. And so we found a club that was out of town, and we said, I said, okay, hey, we'll meet you here. So I got there late. And he was already there at this club and he was sitting at the bar. He came from Toronto and it was two hours away from where I lived and where we met actually. And he was sitting at a bar talking to these two women because he stayed at the hotel. He came down, he stayed at the hotel that was affiliated with this club. And as soon as we walked into the club, he was just standing there. It was like, literally, it was like he was, I walked in the door and was, there he was. And I looked at him. And I had no idea who he was and he was wearing this amazing shirt and he was really preppy and he was wearing these jeans and I looked at him and I turned around to my friend and I said oh I love that guy and she said okay you're crazy you're here to meet somebody else come on let's go so I was nervous and excited and nervous mostly nervous and I uh, just went on about my night that night because I didn't know who he was. We'd never exchanged pictures. It was really hard to exchange pictures on the internet back then. Remember, there were no cell phones. You had to take a picture, go someplace and scan it in and then figure it out that way. And then you had to put it on a disc, one of these discs, and then you had to put it in your computer. It was way more confusing. So we had never exchanged pictures. We had never exchanged pictures. So. I had no idea who, what he looked like and he had no idea who, what I looked like. Later, he said he knew it was me. Anyways, so my friend and I went to the back part of this club and we, you know, were dancing and hanging out and just, just, you know, being together. And I kept looking at the guy because I really liked that guy, but I mean, obviously it was not gonna be him. So finally, at the very end of the night when we'd been there already hours, Right at the very end of the night before we went home, um, I was getting ready to leave and the guy that I saw when we first went in came over and finally introduced himself to us and it was Sam. So the man that I saw, as soon as I walked in and said to my friend, oh, I love that guy because I loved everything about how he looked. Um, it was Sam and he was shy. I think he was probably shy, but he, ne he knew who I was. He figured it out. And he never came up and said that it was him until just as we were about to leave. So obviously, he, we finally met each other at the very end of the evening. So we decided to go and get something to eat. And we chatted for a little while. And then he went back to his hotel. And my friend and I went home. And that was it. Um, except that it wasn't it because after we met we continued to email each other back and forth back and forth and essentially that's it that that's how I met Sam I met him on the internet and the rest is history after that we continued to email each other um, he worked in Toronto I worked a few hour a couple hours away and lived a couple hours away so he eventually we decided to move into in in with each other that was two years after we first met and um, 
so we decided to buy a house together and he found a job close to me that's how I met Sam and that's how he became a part of our life. Looking back, I can see God's role in the whole entire thing. All the times that I almost didn't meet Sam and I almost clicked off the computer and when I, all the times I said, oh, I would never meet him and all the times my friends said, don't meet him, that's just crazy. Um, I can see God's hand holding my hand and, and, um, and click away from the email before I sent it and um, making me continue to chat with him through email even though I wasn't sure I had an interest in him and I can just see God's hand in it so much and Sam is my perfect partner he is my knight in shining armor he is the man that I was meant to be with I truly believe that he is the father to my kids and he is an amazing father I always tell people it's like having another wife because he is my equal partner he does everything that I do he does as well he helps he cooks he cleans all right he doesn't clean but he does he cooks and he everything he's like the kids it's like the kids have two mothers that's how involved he is i'm not just the only parent in our house we both parent equally and it's amazing and i thank god every day that i didn't listen to all the doubt that i had in myself and that other people gave to me and um, i'm just so grateful and in honor of father's day um gabby and sophie are going to come and tell you guys what they love about dad the most what do you love about dad what i love about dad the most is I would say he drives us places a lot and he gets us candy a lot. He takes us where we want to go and he buys us the stuff that we like. Is that what he does? Yes. You know what I like about dad for you? I like that he cares about what she thinks and that she has him wrapped around her little finger and that he does whatever she wants most of the time. And even though from a parenting point of view, maybe that's not a great thing, but I love that for her. I think every girl should have a dad, a daddy daughter relationship the way that Gabby and daddy ha and Sam do. Do you think the same? Love you, dad. All right, so Sophie is gonna say what she loves about dad. Okay, I love that dad loves us and cares about us. How do you know dad loves you and cares about you? Because he always gives me a kiss at night. Yeah, he always tucks you in. <laughs> and he's always there, right? He always, everything we do, he does with us and he always helps us. Every time we have computer problems, or electronic problems. He's always helping us, right? Yeah. I love you, Dad. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the story of how I met my husband. And I'm so glad he was not a serial killer or a crazy person. And it turned out really well for us. The world is so different now. Internet dating is a huge thing. And I'm glad because if people can find the person that they're meant to be with, um, then that's all that's important. Happy Father's Day and thanks for watching. And don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below.